The sea was rough that day, my friends. The acid ocean waves were pounding, the whirlpools were whirring, and the sea creatures were standing and stealing babies? Oh, and Sue is now a tree? In Marcus's words, what the fuck? Hey everyone, I'm Brent the Middleman, your middle-aged middle manager from Middle America in a Midlife Crisis, here today with another video about HBO Max's terrifically horrifying sci-fi series Raised by Wolves. We have a lot to cover in today's video about episode 6 of season 2 titled The Tree. First off, if you're hearing voices, it's probably a good idea to not do what they say. Second, I think this episode confirmed a ton of theories. It became crystal clear that the Mithraic religion came from Kepler 22b, and the stories were all based on real events that occurred on 22b a million years ago. All this information was sent to Earth, along with human and Neanderthal embryos to be raised by a non-weaponized necromancer and a father-like partner. Grandmother may have even been that original necromancer, and she returned to 22b at some point. Campion must be genetically linked to those original Kepler humans, since his touch activated grandmother. In fact, Campion Sturgis, mother's creator, was probably a descendant of those Kepler humans, and that is why he spent his life studying the scriptures, and was the only known person to reprogram a weaponized necromancer. At some point during the war, Campion Sturgis realized the Mithraic had opened Pandora's box with the necromancers, and decided to renounce his faith in order to save humanity by sending mother and father to the only other planet he knew of that could sustain human life, Kepler 22b. But whether he was aware of it or not, Kepler 22b was just lying dormant, waiting for humans to return. I'm thinking that he was somewhat aware as he instructed them to name his youngest child Campion, perhaps knowing the six would contain his genetic makeup and could survive on 22b, the orphan boy in the empty land who would become king. The show is also drawing clearer lines between the good and the bad on Kepler. Father even says that he believes grandmother is good and the other voice is bad. The fact that grandmother has no weapon systems and the voice just turned Sue into a tree makes me think father, as usual, is spot on. I have a feeling that they are going to need grandmother's help to stop Soul from accomplishing whatever his endgame is. Speaking of Soul's plan, we saw him accomplish yet another step when Sue opened the seed box and we learned what the horrifying discovery was. And boy, did it live up to the hype. When the seed absorbed into her skin, I was like, oh snap, yeah that's pretty soul damn horrifying. I read a lot of theories about the seeds in the tree, but I don't recall seeing one where a human would be turned into the tree. At least that's what it appears to be. Have we seen the last of Sue? And then Marcus ate the inside of the giant seed things that were growing on the tree, and it looked a lot like a brain. Plants grow fruit so animals will eat it, then poop out the seeds in another place so it can spread its genetic line. It looks like in the next episode, the remaining humans will be eating from the tree. My question is, what is Soul trying to spread to everyone? Will they become the hooded worshippers we saw in Season 1, following Soul's instructions to build necromancers and birth more serpents? Speaking of serpents, it became very obvious that number 7 is tied to the seed and the tree. When Sue and Paul were using the laser on the seed box, number 7 could sense it and started going crazy. Oh, and when Mother scolded her snake baby and it started crying, I actually felt bad for it. Yes, I felt bad for a fake flying snake being comforted by its necromancer mother. Isn't this show awesome? I believe next episode we will see number 7 escape the cave and fly to the tree. I bet we get a shot of the serpent wrapped around the tree recreating this iconic image. What will happen when number 7 gets to the tree? I theorized last video that perhaps the serpent is in its final form. That it could evolve into a necromancer like grandmother. I started thinking this because grandmother's skin looks a lot like a snake skin. And then I rewatched season 1, and while Campion is teaching the new Mithraic kids how to farm the carbos, he tells them that they only grow where the serpent bones lay. If you'll remember, the carbos turned out to be radioactive. When father first squeezed his fuel blood on grandmother, her bones started sprouting plants that father tested and learned that they were radioactive. So grandmother's bones and the serpent bones are made of the same stuff. Did grandmother start out as a serpent and transform into what she is now? Or is this just the type of life that evolves on Kepler? 
And when grandmother is alive again, father says that what she is made of could grow anything. He calls it botanitech, botanical technology. Is the entire planet made up of botanitech? Did they say it could grow cities and even giant androids? Is my wild theory about Kepler-22b being a giant android maybe not that crazy? We'll find out. Oh, and here's something to think about when you're theory crafting. The cold side of the planet from season 1 was covered in serpent bones and holes, devolved humans, and had no food other than the carbos that grew out of the serpent bones. In season 2, the tropical zone has edible food and no snake holes or bones. It's actually fit for humans to live in. Oh, and it has an electromagnetic field that keeps out souls' transmission. From a human perspective, is there literally a good and bad side of 22b? Is one side dead and one side alive? And now Soul got a tree planted on the good side so he can finally conquer the tropical zone. And speaking of conquering the tropical zone, we finally saw what lived down in the whirlpool holes. Some giant acid ocean creature equipped with its own baby holder. How was it able to hold Tempest baby without hurting it? Was this the plan for her baby all along? Did Sol want Otho to impregnate a bunch of women so their babies could become these creatures? Somehow, when Sol spoke to Otho on the Ark, he must have given him some power that spread to the baby, giving the baby the ability to survive on 22b, just like Campion. They did remind us that Otho was a Heliodramus, the second highest ranking Mithraic. Was this what gave the baby power? We saw that singing a Mithraic song actually had power on 22b, Sue sang the song and it opened the seed box. So maybe on Kepler, prayer actually works. It didn't work on Earth because it wasn't meant for that planet. I mean, it didn't work out so well for the other Mithraics who died in the Ark crash and the ones who were slaughtered by Vril, and that was awesome by the way. But it does work for those whose soul needs for his plan. But before I jump to Sue and the tree stuff, let's talk about the creature taking the baby. The whole scene was really cool as Tempest, whose name literally means a storm, was giving birth, the waves started crashing harder and harder. But when the baby was born, the sea calmed down. The baby's cries were carried down under the water by the whirlpools, so obviously this isn't some normal seawater. It's water on Kepler, so it's Botanitech water. A creature that lives under the ocean swims out, and we see that it is huge. It's not like the other thing we saw with the leeches on it, they just crawled around. This one could stand and use its hands. When it touches Tempest, she is burned by the acid water, but the baby is fine. Sol had passed some kind of protection to it through Otho. The creature cradles the baby gently, and you could tell it's motherly. Then it puts the baby in its chest and jumps back in the water. This was crazy. And did anyone else notice that when Hunter found her, that he was followed by his headless android? That thing is already creeping me out. And what is down under the ocean? A whole society? I felt bad for Tempest, then I remembered her plan was to toss her newborn baby into the acid ocean, and in season 1 she killed and ate a pregnant, devolved human creature. So maybe she got what she deserved? Hopefully we find out next episode what is going to happen with the baby. I'm thinking that the creatures may want to protect it from Sol. When father is talking with grandmother, finally, she asks him how many humans are on the planet. He tells her hundreds with a baby on the way. This confuses her and she gets so worked up it shuts down all the systems she's connected to. Does she know that humans and Kepler don't mix? That now Sol has a new army to wage his war again? It somewhat confirms my theory that there are two factions on Kepler and the Tropical Zone side won. But now Sol has humans to manipulate again, which, judging from the side of the planet we saw in Season 1, is not good for Kepler-22b. That brings us to the biggest shock in an episode full of shocks. Sue got the seed box open and found out that she is the seed. Before we saw that, Mother ran into Lucius, and he showed her the metal card Marcus had taken off the wrinkled tunnel guy. Lucius had watched it, and he felt like he needed to tell Mother because he did not want Paul or Sue to suffer the fate he saw. Mother looks at the card, but we don't get to see, unfortunately. I'm assuming she saw someone turning into a tree, though. But maybe it's something a little different, and Sue isn't gone for good? That seems to be a long shot at this point, though. Marcus, Sue, and Paul get a nice little family moment, but can't get the box open. 
So Marcus falls asleep, and Paul asks Sue to sing him the Mithraic lullaby she sang to him when in hypersleep on the ark. As Sue starts singing, the box starts opening. So, on Kepler 22b, songs and prayers actually work. Grandmother seems to communicate musically when she isn't speaking ancient Mithraic, so who knows what kind of power other Mithraic songs have there. She sees a seed in the box, and as soon as she picks it up, it absorbs into her body and takes her over. She goes to a spot and starts digging, unable to control herself. But that's all we get to see. Paul wakes up and sees the tree, then wakes Marcus. The tree has five branches, which is interesting since in season one, Mother has the kids list all the ways the number five is important in the universe. Marcus is in awe of the tree and walks over and opens a seed with fruit inside that looks just like a brain. When he bites into it, he starts to see the dark photon energy flowing through the tree, and you can hear a heartbeat. Marcus touches it with tears in his eyes. It's a little unclear if he is crying because he feels closer to soul, or if he realizes Sue is now a part of the tree, or she is the tree. Next episode, we will see the survivors eating Sue, um, I mean the fruit, and I'm really curious what this is going to do to them. I suspect they will become soul followers, even though they were previously atheists, and it could be soul rebuilding his hooded human army. I wonder if their first mission will be to trap Mother to try to birth another serpent. I also think we will see the serpent wrap around the tree and maybe eat the fruit. It is an herbivore after all. Will this trigger the serpent to transform into something else? Something like grandmother? Will the serpent have necromancer powers like its mother? I absolutely cannot wait to find out. This episode was completely nuts, and this show continues to surprise me. I love a good mystery and trying to guess what is going to happen next, in case you couldn't tell from all the content on my channel. As always, please leave your theories in the comments. Talking with you guys about your ideas is my favorite part of having this channel. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, and I'll be back soon with some more videos once I've had the chance to watch it again. I'm also re-watching season 1, and I definitely recommend it, as it really hits different after seeing what has happened in season 2. Thanks again everyone for watching and supporting the channel. Once again, I'm Brent the Middleman, and I'll see you next time.